Hey everyone, um, we're going to do a little different thing here today. Um, we're going to do a crappy style jig I like to call uh, my Mayhem Minnow. Uh, in the vise we have a 1 16th ounce do it freestyle head um, with the size 2 Mustad 32 500 uh, skipjack hook, which is a sickle style hook uh, similar to a Matsuo sickle or um, an Eagle Claw Little Nasty. And um, we're going to use different thread. We're going to use UTC Ultra Thread in a 70 denier. Um, only because they didn't have my flat wax nylon in that when I went to uh, Cabela's the other day. Um, so we're going to get started here by putting the base down. As we always do. And... them off the excess to get my uh, scrap bin here ready. Apologize for that. So we're going to wrap almost all the way down to the hook point. Just a little bit before. That's good. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some gray Arctic fox hair. Um, of course, it's uh, my own color gray, uh, is the color of the jig head, <clears throat> which it's all minnow pattern, so it's going to be gray. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pull out some of the long, really long hairs in this Arctic fox, and we're going to tie it in. And I'm not going to just tie it right from here. I'm going to leave a substantial portion of this on so I could tie up to the head here to really secure it in because we are using light thread. You could use heavier thread for this, but I, I like using either 140 or 70 for crappy style jigs. And the length you want this out the back is up to you, but I like, um, I actually like leaving it a little bit longer um, because the bulk of the hair won't be so far past the hook, but you got all these real fine strands that come. Uh, it gives it a, a neat um, effect in the water, and the fish seem to really respond to it. So it's how I kept it like that. Tried different variations of this thing over the years, and this gray pattern seems to work. This this works when plastic doesn't. So you're you know, you're using small little tubes or grubs for your crappy fishing, and they shut down on you even though you're still on fish. This thing kind of works. So I'm going to wrap down just to make some nice secure wraps. And you see how that fox wants to roll on you. That's the hardest part with this material, but it, it works really well. It's it's fantastic in the water. So you got to be careful about getting it all the way around. But once you do, it's a breeze. Now, we have our tail tied in. Well, that's not fox tail, it's fox hair. I'm sorry. And now, flash. This is a single strand. It's real fine. It's uh, it's called UV gray. It's actually like a gray color, but um, when the light hits it, it has um, a bluish purple tint. Anybody familiar with UV materials, uh, you'll know what it looks like. You'll know that, that purplish blue color you get. And we're going to put this in to where it's the, right with these longer hairs coming off the fox, uh, the Arctic fox hair. I'll make a couple wraps and fold it over so we get four strands on each side.
make some more securing wraps, trap some more of that hair down. Again, this is this uh, thread is fine, so you can really secure your jig with this stuff, which I like to do simply because it's so fine. I'm used to using the 210, so I really can cinch it down. So now we got that tied in. Our next step is some chenille, and this is pearl. This is called gray shad. Um, you can substitute pearl shad or salt and pepper shad. Um, this is New Age Chenille. I buy it from eBay uh, most of the time. Uh, that's where you can find most of the colors of this stuff. And I just went and looked at um, shad pattern uh, chenilles when I, when I first made this. And um, this is what I got, and I sort of stuck with it. It works. So we tie it in by that little thread and we begin to wrap. Now I want a little bit of a taper so I'll start when I get about three or four wraps in I'll start doing these like um, double wraps to build up that taper. Just about to the top of the head And we're going to secure it. Then we're going to take our scissors and trim it. Nice and close without nipping. I got a little bit of a string there. Okay, just like that, you're pretty good. You can leave it, but I like to do this. I take a, a grizzly hackle. This is saddle hackle, just a single little grizzly saddle hackle feather, and I'm going to make a collar. Um, I don't know if it really works, if it helps, or if it hinders. It doesn't seem to hurt it, that's for sure. Don't need a lot, just two wraps. So you can get a couple of jigs out of one feather. Fold it down just to get some more wraps in there. Now what I do, because I'm not going to put any head cement um, on that because it's right up tight against, I don't want to get it on any of my fibers. I take a little bit of the Sally Hansen's here. And I spread it onto the thread. That's good. Now we're going to whip finish it. And one more short one for them I'll do. Two, three, four. And to cut my line. I'm going to use this. This is a cuticle trimmer. This works. This is nifty. And there you have it. We'll get the forceps out so you can see it. This is a, a really nifty little minnow. It looks great in the water. Really effective. Get my things here. If I can open them up, you could see this.
in the water this little collar really breeds and pulsates the action you get from this fox hair is unbelievable um give it a try i think you might like this one if you're a crappy angler get it to focus a little better and see if i can hold it steadier if you're a crappy angler this might be something that you might want to look at try and um give it a shot let me know what you think thanks for watching